come, and then we're going to server A. Server A. Five, four, three, two, one. Roll pack A. Tonight on Native Affairs, Brian Tamaki says New Zealand should have an official religion. If so, which one? Foreign religion flies in the face of what we're living in. A Christian country is running against what goes. I think Māori television evolved out of the need for Māori to be producing programs in the language to help develop the language. Stand by two. We have a huge responsibility. We not only have to, uh, you know, adhere to that kaupapa, that that issue, that that reason for being, but we also have to be cognizant of the fact that we've got to get an audience. Sydney Holland with that report. Later this month, a discussion document. Will Julian Wilcox is not just the face of Maori television, but one of the country's most active promoters of Te Reo the Maori language itself. It's perhaps surprising that although Maori account for 15% of New Zealand's population of 4 million, scarcely 150,000 of them are still conversant in the language. Julian Wilcox works on the theory that they need to use it or lose it. This is his day job, teaching Māori and Pākehā, non-Māori students, the intricacies and inflections of New Zealand's second official language. I just made a conscious decision that whatever I was going to do, it was going to either be involved with things Māori or, or using the language. E rima tāra and um, in media just seemed a good way of, of putting it all together. He got his start in radio and five nights a week he still drops into this studio in South Auckland and pre-records a current affairs program for Radio Watia. He's a rising star. There is probably, you know, no other broadcaster as fluent in both languages as Julian and has an ability to ad lib in both languages. I think that he's a major broadcaster in the making. You could probably say the same about Maori television. After a relatively low key launch three years ago when its signal reached only half the country, the station is finding its voice, its confidence <laughs> and its audience. We now, you know, are looking at uh, when we'll break 800,000 uh, discrete viewers in a month. They said he's just waiting to happen and Amy's stuck in the middle. Channel One? I don't want to watch Coro. Yeah. Turn it over. Scylla and Charlene are among the more recent converts. I'm doing a course, so getting exposure to more real on the TV is, is really good. She likes the docos and anything to do with promoting Māori language because she's trying to learn it. So, But that's all right. I mean, there's a little bit in there for everybody. And the big hit so far was their Anzac Day blockbuster, an 18-hour broadcast that for many Kiwis was their first taste of Māori television. We hit the tone exactly right, with the right amount of sentimentality and information and new thinking and old stories, you know, stories that a lot of um, those old soldiers hadn't actually shared before and, and for some reason they were ripe for sharing. We'll bring you the controversial story of Hane Manahi and the revealing quest to reinstate a VC more than 20 years after his death. 
The battle's taken them from Rotorua, through the Waitangi Tribunal, to Buckingham Palace, and to Takuruna itself, where in 1943, Hanemanahi won his recommendation for a Victoria Cross. Sharing the stories that existing broadcasters have tended to overlook here is part of Maori TV's copper, its reason for being, and its point of difference. Waitangi, the place of the weeping waters. A place so panoramic and pristine, yet it has become known for one day every year. A day that for some represents the troubled history of a young nation. For on this day and at this place, 167 years ago, the Treaty of Waitangi was signed. Waitangi Day is the annual commemoration of the landmark 19th century treaty that still defines the complex relationships, rights and responsibilities between New Zealand authorities and Maori. Invariably, it's been a focus for the ongoing struggle for Maori to get a better deal for those among the most economically and socially disadvantaged in New Zealand society. Maori even needed to take the fight for their right to establish their own television station through Parliament, the Waitangi Tribunal and ultimately to a Royal Commission. There's been big battles, a lot of tears have been shed to get this station going, to give Māori the opportunity to show non-Māori that we can do this game as, as good as, if not better than everyone else. Roll Q, still to come on Native Affairs. It's quite hard, isn't it, really, to be able to have a big audience, but I think a lot of people may be put off by it because of thinking that it's that everything's going to be totally a Māori. But there are a lot of shows that have subtitles and even in English. Here, the subtitling team is putting the final touches to an episode of one of the other surprising standouts in the regular schedule, a hunting program that's as popular with Pākehā as it is among Māori viewers. And we're here to meet a colourful character by the name of Cheeky Yates. Now, he's sort of a blend between the crocodile hunter, Jed Clampett and Mad Max. He's a bit blind, so I've got my high vis and my helmet too. Let's go meet Cheeky. Good to meet you anyway, Ronnie. They are New Zealand perspectives. They are New Zealand stories. As much as they are Māori stories, they're also stories that apply to non-Māori. So why shouldn't they be in prime time? And the reasons for that are as much financial as philosophical. Around a third of Māori TV's $40 million annual budget comes from a contestable pool of public funding, especially for Māori programs. And the more they muscle in on that money, the less is available to New Zealand's other three TV networks. Specific funding has to be given to Māori TV. You know, there's a lot to this, uh, but people who say that funding specifically for Māori is racist don't know what the heck they're talking about. It's about recognising the Indigenous culture here. This is Willie Jackson and John Tamahiri on Radio Live. These two former MPs are among the busiest Maori broadcasters in the country, fronting a daily talkback radio show and a couple of TV current affairs programs from a Maori perspective. At a recent parliamentary select committee hearing, Maori MPs challenged the boss of the main public broadcaster, TVNZ, to explain why there were no Maori programs in its primetime schedule. Let's be realistic about this. There's less than 4% of New Zealanders speak Māori, and so putting a Māori language program in prime time uh, simply won't rate. You know, look, on mainstream, we're still uh, ghetto-wise, for the want of a better term. Uh, like the show, he's, he shoots for mainstream TV. They put it on early in the morning when no-one's watching it. Prime Minister Tēnākui. <laughs> well, you've had a rough time lately. Basically, Māori was shut out for about 40 years. We didn't have our own TV channel and didn't have our own Māori radio stations. And, but what people are seeing now is that Māori TV is sexy. You know, it's, it's, it's a happening thing. It's for everyone. So do you think they're on the right track? Yep, yep. There's a new programme that started, actually, Native Affairs, which is really good. It's like a 60-minute sort of version. And did the name of the show get up a few people's nose? Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah, more Māori than non-Māori, which which we expected. We knew it was going to be controversial. We knew that 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 a lot of Māori wouldn't like it. We knew mostly our elders would have a lot to say about it because it has that negative stigma. Um, it seemed to be a pejorative term, and we were aware of that. <laughs> The natives are restless. Native. The show tackled the controversy over its provocative title head-on in its opening episode. Native Affairs is about putting us down, keeping us in place, stealing things from us, stealing our land, stealing our resources, stealing our language. In other parts of the world, it's a word used with pride by Indigenous peoples. Uh, Native Americans refer to themselves as Native Americans and reject the term Indians. I'm really comfortable with the word. I think it reflects indigeneity and it reflects um, the long... Um, the long-standing history of Indigenous peoples all over the world. This haka being performed to draw attention to the wish of the destiny... So, yeah, there is a big debate around that, and Māori television is at the forefront of trying to change people's perceptions on the fact that Māori broadcasting, Māori programmes, or programmes with Māori in them, and certainly programmes in the language, can be broadcast in prime time. Now, we've come a long way in 20 mm. years, and sometimes you've got to pinch yourself to say, crikey, you know, we've got our own uh, immersion schools, uh, mm. wānangas, uh, you know, primary schools, secondary schools, got our own radio stations now. Our own, so you can hear the jingle and the jangle of yourself and feel very proud about that. When I got the call to ask to, become, to come here to be a worker, I, you know, I would have swept the floors because I just, you know, it was an honour for me to be a part of this. Given the tradition and the lineage and all those doyens and Māoridom who have worked in broadcasting, they wanted to see this. <laughs> this is New Zealand station, uh, not just Māori. And whilst, uh, you know, this is a Māori television station, it is for all New Zealanders. You know, I keep that in mind every day I turn up. And I think everyone else here does as well. Akati Kweda Native Affairs, Mote Ne Raro Po Tehetehe. Join us next week. Until then, Engai, we keep it native. Te Poe Kato.